Now, from time to time, there are individuals who get in touch with us because they may have objects or <laughs> other pieces of physical evidence uh, which are related to this phenomena. And uh, I am personally interested in any piece of uh, physical evidence as long as it uh, can be documented and uh, has a legal uh, quote-unquote chain of evidence behind it. I came across a case uh, some years ago of uh, a fireman at that time for the Bakersfield Fire Department who was uh, an environmental specialist and arson specialist. So this man was a professional at collecting physical evidence. Now he had uh, related uh, a number of stories to us uh, about his personal involvement uh, with the abduction phenomena, seeing beings come into his room, having other family members uh, also uh, worked on by these beings, uh, having some kind of relationship with both he, uh, his wife, and uh, his two children. Uh, so uh, he was um, extremely interested in documenting this, so he originally installed uh, a video camera and a small clock radio in the bedroom and filmed hundreds and hundreds of hours of this stuff going on at night. Then he would sit uh, again for many hundreds of hours and looking at the video, sometimes the frame at a time, until he was able to buy equipment to break the uh, break his uh, visual acuity down into even uh, finer terms and that look looking at uh, the fields uh, which are contained uh, in each video frame and each video frame has two video fields so in looking at these he was able to see in certain instances uh, some kind of a being that uh, came in through the wall of his closet and so this was the first bit of physical evidence that he was able to get Another thing that he decided to do was to try and uh, capture footprints of these individuals. So he used a towel, and on the undersurface of the towel, he laminated a piece of tin foil, which he put down on the floor. Now, the towel was the same color as the rug. So he put this down on the floor in front of the wall where he sees these individuals coming through. And in that way, he was able to get footprints, uh, and he casted them. So we also have footprints of whatever it is came into this uh, house. Uh, he figured that as long as he was successful in getting one set of footprints, then why not get more? So uh, he put the towel down after that and uh, got nothing. It was, even, it was as if these individuals decided that they weren't going to step on this towel anymore. One morning, however, he looked at the towel and he saw embedded into this towel a small black object. And he picked it up and looked closely at it, and he could see that it was a very strange-looking nail or, or claw-like object, and it had three black hairs that were growing out of the back of it. Uh, he contacted me, and uh, we sent uh, the object to the head of zoology at the University of California, Berkeley, a Dr. Ted Pappenfuss, who looked at this and in writing told us that he did not know where this came from. So uh, we sent it in to a, a scientist friend of mine who looked at it and uh, told us that the exterior covering of this object was vegetable. And I suggested perhaps, as we see with the human fingernails, that this vegetable material was fungus, and uh, he concurred with that. The second layer of material was keratin, and this is the same uh, material that's found in uh, human fingernails and toenails. And then there were deeper layers still. So we decided that uh, the best thing to do at this point was to try and get uh, DNA studies. And uh, this uh, required raising some funds, which we were successful with. And the object uh, was sent to a world-famous geneticist who started preliminary uh, DNA uh, research. And uh, to date, we have quite a bit of this that has come back. And so far, uh, the DNA indicates that it's not, uh, did not come from any kind of a creature of this Earth. Now, this uh, DNA uh, testing is uh, a work in progress. 
and we hope uh, sometime in the future uh, to have a definitive answer. Well, there are numerous encounters uh, between Gary himself and these alien beings. He's left notes for them. Uh, he's asked them questions. Uh, he claims that they've even uh, taken him on a spacecraft. Uh, they've showed him uh, their home world. They've taken him back uh, over the eastern seaboard of the United States. They showed him the Statue of Liberty uh, laying in the water and uh, Manhattan Island totally devastated uh, by some kind of a disaster that occurred. Uh, they, they would not answer his questions as to what this was pertaining to other than something that would happen in the future. But this is not unusual because uh, many, many other abductees have been shown catastrophic uh, events uh, and many of them uh, are on the eastern seaboard also. So the beings that he's seen uh, that come into the room or uh, uh, initiate some kind of contact with uh, him uh, are seemingly interested in something either in his psychology or his physiology and of course we don't know what exactly it is they're looking for or what exactly there is uh, that's going on. What does he tell you they look like in appearance and are they benevolent or does he feel threatened? In some instances, uh, he feels that they are benevolent, and, uh, but in most instances, uh, his attitude is that they, they are there, they're doing a job, and they really have not that much interest in the individual human that they're doing it to. And they give uh, very few um, answers to his questions, if any answers at all. Uh, as far as their appearance is concerned, he's seen a myriad of uh, beings. Uh, he's seen even the uh, typical uh, large-eyed uh, uh, gray beings that are short. He's seen uh, beings that look uh, reptilian. He's seen beings that uh, uh, look more insect-like. Um, it, it's quite a, a different variety. He also sees them bring uh, a lot of what he calls apparatus into the house. Uh, uh, boxes and paraphernalia and other instruments that he's described uh, in detail. Um, also, uh, he, he claims that you know they do various experiments on him uh, right there in the bedroom without uh, him going anywhere. Look at this. If you could, it looks like I, like I've brightened the whiteness a little bit. Oh my God! Jesus. You can see the nose. Yeah. The nose is real clear on that one. It looks almost like a cross in between its eyes. And you can really see that antenna. Yeah. Oh, yeah, right, right, right. Oh, that's fantastic.